and welcome everybody to the 12 o'clock show with Mayor Joe. Joining me today is the Reynoldsburg uh, Police Department social worker, Melissa Blankenship. How are you? I'm doing well. She's excited to be here, can we tell? <laughs> uh, got a lot of good things going on today. Got some good announcements, maybe even a surprise or two as we go on. But first and foremost, let's talk about your position. Um, first of all, what is a... What does a typical social worker do? Not necessarily somebody in your position, but what right. does a typical social worker do? Well, social workers in general are just out there to help people um, that may be dealing with a complex um, issue or different complicated problems that may be psychological, health, medical, or um, financial, and just really assisting people in need. Um, my motto kind of is, and I think most social workers is to, you know, kind of listen, link, and then empower individuals to just live their best lives. All right. Now, what's interesting about this process the, to coming into Reynoldsburg, um, you know, you were kind of given the keys to the castle and like, let's create a program that doesn't exist anywhere in the state of Ohio. And what would you do about that? So how are you adapting, you know, what you just described uh, to meet the needs of the citizens of Reynoldsburg as well as the members of the police department? Right. So uh, adapting this has been really difficult. Um, there is not a model here in Ohio. And so, as you said, so um, I'm looking to some of the other police departments, um, but looking, you know, not everybody is the same as, mm -hmm. as Reynoldsburg. We have 41,000 people, so it's a lot different um, size-wise. Um, so I've been adapting it to kind of look at one um, officer um, health, safety, kind of welfare um, for them so that we have our officers out there on the streets um, at their best. Um, also, so that would be, um, we're implementing a peer assistance team model um, that I'll be overseeing. That also allows us to implement some new trainings um, for our officers that maybe they wouldn't have access to previously. Also allows me to give them a lot of inside knowledge on um, maybe behaviors that they may see and why and then how to interact and um, engage individuals. Um, then the other thing has been just really to, is a starting point of building bridges. Um, my goal is not to take on every person's issue. Um, I can't be every person's counselor since there's only one of me. Um, so I wanna be able to bridge people um, and bridge them to the right people as soon as possible, remove some of those barriers. So I've been spending a substantial amount of time building um, resources and relationships with other um, agencies that are skilled in, in addressing different needs. So from um, developmental disabilities to elderly issues to domestic violence to um, juvenile issues. So it's been really cool to be able to look at um, the whole gamut and, and a holistic view of, of Reynoldsburg as a city versus one individual and what they may need. Um, and then also being able to go out and do some wraparound care with our residents. So if we do have those cases that come in that um, meet that social service kind of criteria, which here in Reynoldsburg about 80% of our cases do, um, the goal is to have a social worker um, to be able to go out and, and meet with that person if they're vol it's a voluntarily thing. So if they're willing to meet with the social worker, um, do a brief assessment, and give them the resources that they need to get linked to the people that can help them um, and ultimately reduce the stress in their lives. All about reducing stress. Yeah. We were talking about yoga before this, everything started, so we know that that's a big thing. <laughs> can you give us a couple of examples of what you've done? I mean, obviously your third day on the job was the day's end, but outside of that, can you give us some examples about what you've done already so far in just this short period of time? So I've been super busy. Every day has been very busy. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm working with um, a lot of different agencies on building relationships. Um, I've had a, several really good meetings with mental health agencies or our psychiatric units um, to really work on continuity of care and being able to um, divert people to the right person. So if it isn't a law enforcement issue, as if it isn't, um, a fire issue than getting them to the medical provider or the mental health provider that they need um, to help alleviate that. I got to do um, an amazing video for Hannah Ashton Middle School for their sixth grade students to discuss community issues. So I'm eagerly awaiting the results from those projects. 
Um, I've got to do some homeless outreach here in our community um, and trying to locate individuals and engage individuals, um, develop some resources and programming for them. Um, we've done some community events, which has been really cool to be able to listen to um, people's feedback, regardless of how small that number may be. I hope hopefully it will grow because it's important as people um, want their city to respond in a certain way, that it's important then that they engage in that process so that way um, we're constantly getting that feedback. So um, to be able to hear what they need um, and, and what they value is, is important to what I'm doing too. Um, I've started responding already to referrals that we've been receiving, so we may have some concerns about you know, an elderly person or domestic violence. We're doing really good stuff with some of our mental health um, where I've been able to do some collateral um, team meetings with service coordinators from a county board or a mental health facility. So really just closing that gap, um, making sure that we can support the families as best as possible. Um, and then one of my favorite experiences is the Citizens Police Academy which Mayor Begany gets to do um, next time, but it is truly anybody that wants to, lives in Reynoldsburg or um, works in Reynoldsburg, I believe is eligible to go to it, but it is a behind the scenes peek at exactly what's going on mm -hmm. and how they have to make decisions and the policies and the laws that you know dictate what they do. Um, and then it gives you a big picture view of Reynoldsburg and the issues that we're facing, the different zones that have different issues mm -hmm. um, and priorities, and kind of seeing how you have to manage all of those. Love being able to, you know, go into the firearms range, the scenarios I lived. <laughs> I did not die in any of the three scenarios, so uh -huh. I'm proud of that. Um, but it was a, the most amazing experience, so I get to graduate tonight. All right. um, so I feel like I may get a little plastic badge, um, Marshall King, that's what I want. <laughs> um, and then, you know, really also just being able to even um, review body cam footage has been a great thing. Mm -hmm. I know they're, all of our officers are wearing body cam footage, so it, it helps me when I'm looking at a referral to be able to look at that situation. Um, and gain really good clinical insight before I'm engaging that person. Um, so it's been super busy, um, and I expect that it's going to continue to get even busier. I told you it wasn't going to be a boring thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, I know you already talked about Hannah Ashton. Uh, you're also going to be working with Turo Township, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. So I just want to make sure that we've got that. Sorry, let me throw out. So my, cl my community paramedic, Sarah, I've been working with her quite frequently. Chief Sharps has been amazing mm -hmm. um, at trying to assist in, in all of my technology issues. Um, and also, we have been collaborating on some cases and hopefully we're going to start developing, you know, some routing processes between yeah. them. And then, you know, there are things that are medical and also social work. So it's really nice that we'll be able to pair up mm -hmm. and um, meet those citizens needs, you know, yeah. here in our community. They're not going to have to go somewhere else to it's, have that done. It's always good to, you know, to with all the different relationships and the access that you're going to be able to provide to any resident is going to be great, especially with these partnerships. Right. Um, now, we talked a little bit about this. There really isn't anything like this locally, um, what we're trying to do here in Reynoldsburg. So uh, I know that's a daunting thing, but I mean, are, are you excited? still excited about it? It's been, uh, been a little bit of time. I'm super excited. Um, I've been doing social work for 20 years, and I think this is being able to create something. There are times where I'm scared and I'm kind of like, okay, wait, who do I go to? Mm -hmm. um, but then I really am I'm just trying to just draw back in on that and, and live in that moment of, um, you know, I get to work with these officers and our command and our community and you and um, City Attorney Shook on how do we best address the problems in our community mm -hmm. and having that hands-on local um ability to problem solve versus somebody coming in from a state or federal perspective and telling you exactly how to do things um, is an amazing opportunity. So I'm, I'm not, um, I'm very, very humbled and very excited to do it. Um, even on the days that I'm tired and I'm scared, I am loving this and I'm loving the fact that um, we get to have so many um, different stakeholder kind of input and guidance um, to try and get it right and not rush. 
Now, ultimately, we're going to build this program out. We talked a little bit. It's budget time at City Hall, so yes. everybody's asking yeah. questions about that. Yeah. Um, you know, once the program is built out, ultimately, you know, what do you and how do you envision impacting everybody in Reynoldsburg? Because right now, obviously, you said you're incredibly busy. It's just one person. Mm -hmm. What do you ex What are you expecting this to go to in the next couple of years? Um, and I, so I've been thinking about this. Our our mission, <laughs> my mission, in the social work program is the same as the police department. You know, we're we're supporting the police department. So we we want to work with the community in a cooperative effort, you know, to address issues through education, prevention and and then their enforcement. I'm never going to take on their enforcement portion of it. So it's super important. Let me reinforce this to everybody out there as a social worker. It's super important to have law enforcement. OK, we actually probably need more law enforcement. Um, then she then told unless, you to say that. No, he absolutely <laughs> didn't. I think he's gonna probably hate me for this one. Um, but I, we, seeing it as a social worker, seeing seeing how things are run and how big the city is and the issues that we are dealing with, um, you know, having more um, officers would be amazing. Off and obviously, officers that are skilled in dealing with mental health, de-escalation, mm -hmm. communication skills, conflict resolution. So our goal next year, we've already put this out there as a priority, is hopefully to have every one of our officers crisis intervention trained. Um, so that way they have that base knowledge. Now that's just base. And then I'm going to come in and keep doing scenario and changes as mental health, addiction, and things change and the dynamics that we see here in Reynoldsburg. Um, with that being said, if we have officers growing, we need social workers to grow alongside that. Um, every day I'm looking at, at the call reports and I am seeing issues, you know, such as the suicidal ideation, well-being checks, um, somebody may be a victim of a crime or domestic violence. We've got issues with our um, some of our juveniles here that really need a lot of support and guidance and their parents need support and guidance. and. Um, there's a wide range of things. And so I really would love to have a team, um, ideally of, of at least two or three going forward that can work even some different hours to be available to do some of those um, closing the gap kind of contacts, those assessments and um, helping people get the resources and linkage that they need because here in Roundsburg, as we all know, not everybody stays home all day. So they may not be there nine to five when I'm working yeah. um, Monday through Friday. So having the social workers that can work a variety of hours and shifts to meet the demands of our population is also something that's super important to me. So I would love to see that. Um, I'm she told you it's budget time. Yep. Yeah, love to see that. Maybe two um, for next year and a third not going into it. Um, we have three zones, so maybe even a fourth. I don't know. We'll see. But um, I'd love to implement some things, uh, like I said, about the homeless outreach team. Um, I'd love to look at, um, we have a huge population uh, or portion of our calls for services that are actually um, mental health calls. And so I'd look like to look at um, a, like a chronic caller kind of program where we have a case manager assigned mm -hmm. that's kind of working with that family to, to determine how to best address what's going on with that person. Um, we want to respond to everybody in need, but um, we also want to be able to respond to those in need, um, not just those that, you know, may be calling for their um, non-law enforcement concerns. Well, I know that that's what we're going to work to in the budget. The chief and I have talked about that, and we want to grow that program out over the next couple of years. So uh, you're, you're going to get you're going to get additional help. So for those of you who are already writing something, you know, yes, we're going to, uh, as long as council approves. So send them to your council members too. Um, this is the moment of truth. Do we have any questions for our guests so far? Yeah, we have a question about community cleanup. And oh, community? Also... Okay, all right, we'll get to that yep. in just a second. So, well, I'd love for you to stick around. We've got a lot of information to kind of go over. Um, so we'll start off, I guess, with the question about community cleanup. Uh, they were asking, they said, um, I miss the community cleanup. What's the best option for disposal of faded, worn American flags? Who should I contact? Uh, I would reach out, actually, to uh, some of the scout groups. You can actually message us here at City Hall, and we can put you in contact with the scouts groups. Uh, they collected 
I, we're going to get the number about it, but I want to say probably uh, over 50 flags uh, this past Saturday. So they're going to be able to take care of those. Reach out to us. We'll go ahead and make, get you in contact with those groups uh, when they have meetings so you can drop your flag off. Uh, we are going to have another community cleanup day in April, April 23rd. It's Earth Day, so uh, it's going to be the same thing. Probably won't have hazardous materials at that time, but it'll be the more traditional community cleanup, including the shredded truck, flag disposal, and a number of other things. So, But uh, that's, that's a long way away. We have more fun things going on, like <laughs> Halloween, but we'll get to that later. Uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, so I've got my, my pink tie on today supporting the causes with that. Uh, so again, please make sure that you get tested. Uh, early detection is key in this. Uh, so we want to make sure everybody stays healthy. Uh, it is also Stormwater Awareness Week. Uh, we've had some great weather. We definitely changed from you know summertime to now we're definitely in the fall, and those leaves are going to start falling. And the one thing you don't want to do with your leaves is put them in the stormwater drains because that will clog those up. And if there is a rain event in Reynoldsburg, that will make it much more difficult for that water to flow. So make sure you do not put your leaves in the storm drains or grass clippings or anything else along those lines. Um, Halloween Trick or Treat Night is uh, one week from tomorrow. It's going to be on the 28th from 6 to 8 p.m. Rain or shine. Everybody hear me on that one? Rain or shine or snow or sleep or anything. It's going to be that Thursday night. Uh, there's a long history in Franklin County about having that day uh, specifically set aside for it. Uh, so it is going to be that Thursday night. Uh, it helps us as far as, uh, you know, staffing for the police department to make sure that we have enough officers out in the communities during that time. That is one major reason why we have it at that particular time. If it were moved to a Saturday night, or in this case, a Sunday night, that changes things a little bit. Um, so again, we try and keep it as consistent as possible. Uh, we do have a community sustainability meeting tonight. It's gonna be on Zoom. Uh, it's from 6.30 to 8. You should be able to find some of that on our uh, webpage and our Facebook page if you wanna go and talk about it. We're partnering with the Ohio State University on a sustainability plan for the city of Reynoldsburg. So they're gonna have a great conversation with some stakeholders about what we can do uh, to become more sustainable. And it's not just recycling inside, but it's also you know, taking advantage of uh, electric vehicles, hybrid cars, um, sustainable materials in building, things like that. So we've got a lot of good information coming from that. Uh, um, we also have uh, the Raider Marching Pride it has been told when they're going to be able to get ready to go on the road to perform for the state championships. Uh, so they've got their state finals coming up. Uh, on October 30th, that's a Saturday, uh, they're going to be leaving the Livingston campus at 1130. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to try and get a lot of people from the community out there so we can give them a big clap off as they're getting ready to head out to Hilliard uh, for their championship. So hopefully everybody can come out there to the Livingston campus. We'll get that out there as well. Uh, we also have uh, the uh, cash drop for the Diamond Club. I know we've got a couple of members of the Diamond Club in here today. <laughs> so I know they'll be out uh, going ahead and collecting some funds for our uh, baseball team out there at their usual locations, the Five Way, uh, Rose Hill and Maine, things like that. Uh, this Monday, we are going to have our uh, first briefing uh, from our engineers on Civic Park. So for those of you that are interested in what's going to happen with Civic Park, this is the time to come on. They're going to kind of lay out the plan about what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and, and the steps with everything. So obviously, you know, the, the fun things that we're talking about, a dog park and the cricket pitch and you know, a catch and release pond, splash pad, we're going to talk about those things, but also the other stuff, which is the more, uh, the technical stuff, the, the, you know, to make sure that we get electric out there so that way we can have safe uh, walking paths all the way throughout mm -hmm. so we can get the water out there. So if we do community events, uh, you know, you have a little bit more water access out there. So uh, come out uh, on Monday uh, at Civic Park, or <clears throat> sorry, at City Hall to talk about Civic Park at our council meeting. Uh, we also have a good uh, movie this Friday night. Uh, this is going to be Hocus Pocus, and it's going to be at Cuba Park. The film's going to start around 7-ish, depending on when uh, the sun gets dark enough. Uh, so come and enjoy some free popcorn, and it's a great Halloween classic, and everybody can you know, do their amuck, amuck, amuck as much as they want, so we all know that that's what everybody wants to do. Uh, the Halloween spirit doesn't end there. The next day at Huber Park from 1 to 4 p.m. is going to be our Spooky Pooch Parade. And we've got a ton of things going on uh, at Spooky Pooch there, as well as a food drive for Heart Food Pantry that they'll be collecting things there. And because it is a Spooky Pooch Parade, we're going to go ahead and accept some, um, uh, some you know, dog food, cat food, and other pet supplies and things like that as well. So we can get them out to shelters and things of that nature at this time of the year. So we hope to see everybody out in in costume. Uh, it is a spooky pooch, but if you want to have cats, as long as they're leashed, feel free and bring those cats out there. Um, so we've got that. We also have another food drive, the Helping Hands Food Drive. It's Saturday, November 6th. It'll be uh, at 7453 East Main Street. That'll be Helping Hands at their location just down the road from us. 
Uh, so we'll get some more information as we get a little bit closer to that. Again, all non-perishable items and things of that nature, but it's always good to support heart and helping hands uh, in the next couple of weeks, especially as we approach the holidays. Um, <clears throat> we do have a little bit of, a, of an announcement. It's kind of a tease, um, but you're going to find out more uh, in the coming days. Um, I'd invite anybody and everybody who's watching, yes, you, uh, to come on out to uh, the, par the area right across from the cemetery off Hanson Road, the big open field. We've been working uh, with a couple of things, and we're going to make a big announcement about what's going to go in in that particular area. Uh, so you can arrive probably starting around 4.30. Uh, the ceremony will kick off at about 5 o'clock. Uh, you'll probably find out more the night before at council about what exactly is going to go in there, but the pretty cool pictures and the cool things that you're going to see are going to be on that Tuesday. Uh, the, the Raider Marching Pride is going to come out, and they're going to uh, be able to perform a little bit, so that'll be good. We'll have representatives from all across the city, but most importantly, what we want is we want you to bring your kids uh, because this is going to be a very kid-oriented uh, thing that's going to be coming in there. It's, uh, so it's going to be great. I hope you can make it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, that's at the uh, big open field across from the cemetery. You can park off Hanson. Uh, we'll get them there, but it's going to be a great facility all the way across. Uh, any questions so far from anybody? Not this time. All right. Well, let's just quickly wrap this up then. Now, uh, <laughs> if you do have questions at any time, again, please feel free and ask. Now, remember, you don't have to necessarily ask questions specifically about the guest of the week, though it's always nice. Uh, or sometimes it's better when no one asks questions. Yeah. It can go either way. <laughs> Uh, but you can always ask questions about anything and everything that's going on in the city of Reynoldsburg. Send them to us and we can get that information out to you. Uh, next week is our uh, special Halloween week. So, yes, we will be in costume this time. So my guest will be uh, Reynoldsburg City School Board member Angela Abrams. So she's going to join <laughs> us. And she hopefully has her costume picked out. You better, Angela. Uh, but we also may have another surprise guest as well that day as well uh, to kind of tie in a little bit with what we're doing next week uh, for our uh, big announcement. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, again, uh, again, make sure you get uh, screened and tested as far as uh, taking care of uh, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Make sure you deal with that. Uh, get out and enjoy the weather. It's going to be nice. Come out to the Spooky Pooch Parade. Uh, come out to the food drive and then get ready again next week for Halloween Trick or Treat itself. I know I have my costumes ready. And as always, make sure you're safe, uh, respectful, and as always, please put away your shopping carts. I put about a dozen of them away. Uh, at the Kroger over off of uh, Main Street uh, earlier this week. So uh, just because I'm gonna, get, I just get bored and frustrated. So everybody have a wonderful time. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.